Hey guys, time for another random video. When I can't come up with a cohesive narrative, I just string together a pile of random, mindless crap instead. Let's start with KTM and Husqvarna pricing. The 2020 prices are out, and ouch! <laughs> are they serious with these prices? Almost 18,000 Aussie dollars for KTM 6-day 300 two-stroke. Okay, that is the ride-away price, and it's around 12,700 US. But seriously, I have heard suggestions they are trying to cover the cost of getting that WP suspension working properly. Here is a list of their various forks over the past 10 years, <laughs> including the terrible 4CS forks that needed a global recall due to the risks of internal part seizing. Now, I don't think they are seriously trying to cover those costs, but you do wonder if they would save a lot more money by giving up on their European suspension and just fitting the Japanese Kayabas instead, as other European brands are starting to do. So seriously, what do you guys think of KDM and Husqvarna's pricing? Are you really paying for better quality? Or are they just charging what the market is willing to accept? Or should we just get Japan to start manufacturing the old dinosaurs again? Check this out guys, 1977 RM250B. We used to drool over this sort of thing when we were kids. And a 1977 RM125B. Meanwhile, in Canada, hey. A while back, we reported on how chin straps were falling off Aero and Suomi helmets because the helmet brackets rusted out. Since that video, we've had quite a few more reports of this, but thankfully there haven't been any cases in the past three years. So hopefully they use proper stainless steel brackets now. The bad news? We emailed both companies a list of questions about these bracket failures, neither bothered to answer us. Okay, there weren't that many cases, but we thought it was serious enough to at least preserve a reply. We also asked about a recent helmet failure where Aero asked the customer to mail them the helmet for inspection, but eventually it was returned because Aero never bothered picking it up from the post office. Aero has not responded to the customer since then, or us, about this case. Even more interesting, we had these rusted brackets and some strap failures reported on other brands too, and not cheap brands. Fox, Liat, AGV, Just One, and even Bell. The problem? From where I stand, it seems that stainless steel fittings are not required by the helmet standards, and they should be. And of course, manufacturers should stop trying to save a few cents and use proper marine grade stainless steel. So next time you buy a helmet, ask them first and get a definite answer. Are they using stainless steel brackets? Damn it guys, I got my third puncture in two weeks. Lucky I got tubeless. Ben's on hand to fix my puncture. So we have tubeless tyre repair kit. Very handy, got everything you need to do with the tubeless tyre systems out on the track. Plugs, glue, and a reamer. If you haven't uh, read the instructions, just a quick overview. The reamer just cleans out the hole a little bit. So, just to give you a demonstration. See a 
if you can spot the experienced log hopper. <laughs> Forget those traditional coaching methods. Get into cross-training enduro where we experiment with cutting-edge techniques. Even if they are likely to kill you. Today, we have the motto Sherco. The Sherco or the Sherco? I don't know. But it's very vivid. It's very sexy. It's a morceau of sophistication. Very good.